So in this video, I'm talking about how do you avoid eating sugary foods without losing your mind. And I'll preface it by saying that I do not consume any sugary foods. Now, many have said that Kevin is some sort of superhuman being. And as much as I like being called a superhero, it's actually not the case at all. There are some very concrete steps that I took over the years to be where I am today. It didn't happen overnight. And I'm going to share it with you because I think that in a world where type two diabetes is so prevalent and a world also where so many people struggle with trying to stop eating sugary foods that to whom much is given, much is expected. And I've been really blessed by finding a way and a path to stop eating sugary foods, a way that I've been able to share with my clients and help them, many of them stop eating sugary foods. Stay tuned. And I look forward to sharing this with you. So in today's video, we're talking about how do you stop eating sugary foods without losing your mind. Now, I'm going to start by thanking everyone for tuning in and do be sure to like and subscribe. We've had a tremendous amount of support for this channel so far, and I really appreciate being able to share all that I've learned over the past 30 years of my career, helping others with you. So getting onto it, how do you stop eating sugary foods? without losing your mind. The first step is to be in a place where you're not beating yourself up. Understand you are surrounded, completely surrounded by what are called hyper palatable foods. We figured out through technology, how to take the fiber out of the natural foods that we eat and create by adding certain concentrations of sugar, salts, and fats very often to create products that are almost addictive. Keep in mind, the part of your brain that responds to sugary foods is the same part of your brain that responds when someone uses opioids or someone uses a drug like cocaine. It's called the HPA axis. It's a very, very powerful part of our body related to what's called our pleasure centers. And that pleasure response can sometimes make us, as you very well know, do things that we don't necessarily always want to do. It can make us have cravings for things that intellectually we know we shouldn't be eating, but physically it's almost like it's an almost irresistible force that makes us keep on eating all these sweet things. And the important part to start is that there's nothing wrong with you. The most important thing of this entire video is for you to start with the perspective of there is nothing wrong with you and it's perfectly human for you to crave sweet things. I want you to even say it to yourself. It's perfectly normal and human to crave sweet foods. Now there's a reason for that. And if you understand the reason, it's going to stop you from beating yourself up. And that's first thing you want to do is get to a place where you're not beating yourself up. Now, every single one of us have come from an ancestral background where if we didn't have that pleasure center response to sugars, we would not exist. How could that be? Think about it. An infant, when an infant is suckling, when an infant is drinking breast milk, the only reason why that infant knows that it should be drinking breast milk is because of an HPA axis response. When a baby or an infant mammal of any type has its first taste of milk. There are sugars in the milk, not much sugar, but there are sugars in that milk, along with some fats that really stimulate the HPA axis. Those pleasure centers fire up and because of it, the baby keeps on drinking. Now understand this before the 20th century. At the advent of things like baby formulas, 
any human baby that didn't have access to human breast milk would perish. There's no other food that a human baby, a newborn human baby can consume. And so for our very survival, we are hardwired with that attachment to pleasure being associated with sweet foods. Now you may think to yourself that breast milk or milk in general, isn't that sweet, but understand in nature, nothing in nature is sweeter than let's say a carrot. When I say in nature, I'm talking about wild foods. If you were consuming fruits that have not been agriculturally developed by humans, you're not going to find the sweetness that we're so used to in our regular fruits. Some argue that honey is sweet and therefore there are very sweet, naturally occurring foods. But the problem is that we only have evidence of humans really consuming honey going back to about 8,000 years. And before that, before the dawn of human agriculture and our ability to stay in one place and not have a hunter gatherer type existence, humans didn't really have access to hunt. Even under those circumstances, going back 8,000 years and to the dawn of agriculture as well, honey was used primarily for medicinal purposes and the amount of honey that you would have available to our ancestors really isn't enough to say that we have evolved alongside with it to be able to consume really sweet things and not have any problems because that's just not the case. Our fruits have been modified over centuries of agriculture to be as sweet as possible. If you ever have the good fortune, for example, to eat a fruit that hasn't been touched by agriculture, by any type of human intervention whatsoever, and they do exist, not in many places, but places like, for example, the Amazon, some parts of Africa as well, you'll find that, like I said, they aren't any sweeter than a carrot. And they also are really high in fiber, really high in bulk. Now, modern fruits are much higher in sugars because we've altered them to be as sweet as possible, but we've evolved in very large quantities, eating these particular fruits and vegetables as well. And so our bodies are adapted to them and because they are high in fiber and because they are also high in bulk, there's only so much you can eat. I always give the example of apples. None of us can eat that many apples, but all of us can consume a dozen apples easily that we would probably consume in a glass of apple juice. The processing is all about taking the fiber out and by taking the fiber out and adding sugar, we can eat more and the sugar makes us want more and companies and the food manufacturing sector spends millions of dollars to create foods that have that exact bliss point that's going to make your brain completely overreact. Now, again, our brains, our bodies are designed to react only to very small amounts of sugar. So imagine how much of a unstoppable force it can be when you consume something really sweet. Now I say all this to say that you should not at all be beating yourself up if you find yourself failing because the path that I'm describing is one of, I would say, decompression. To think of it in terms of a diver who is deep underwater and needs to get back to the surface. And I say get back to the surface because taking sweet foods and sugary foods out of your diet is actually going more towards your natural self, eating more like the way that your body was designed for it to eat. And so, in keeping that decompression model that I'm describing, as you take one thing out of your diet, you don't want to have any extreme 
adverse effects. So you need to put something back in. So it's very important if you're stopping eating sugary foods to make sure that you're not on a low carbohydrate diet. It's a huge mistake to try to take sugary foods out of your diet and at the same time, restrict your carbohydrate intake. In fact, we talked earlier about the importance of fiber. And it's going to be very important that all your carbohydrate sources are very high in fiber. And the timing is important as well. Many people who find themselves craving sugar tend to crave sugar and sugary foods sometime around three, four o'clock, going over to the evening and into the night. And as the day goes by, those cravings get stronger and stronger and stronger. One of the best ways to help deal with those cravings and not have sugary foods in your life is to front load your carbohydrates earlier in the day and front load with really high fiber carbohydrates. If you have a good breakfast, big breakfast with high fibrous sources such as oatmeal or oat bran cereal, which is one of my personal favorites. It's what I eat very much every day, along with some protein. It's going to go a long way because of the high fiber content to fill you up. And also because your body had carbohydrates earlier in the day, you're not going to have the same dramatic response of a need, an almost addictive need for carbohydrates later in the day. Now you will feel it, but it will be not anywhere near as extreme. It's going to blunt that pleasure seeking response that usually happens to most of us later in the day. So very important. Like I said, first, make sure you have carbohydrates in your diet and also make sure you have a good high fiber breakfast. Other thing that's important is to note that you need to eat carbohydrates for what you're about to do. So if you're going to be active more than normal, you need to have some carbohydrates and again, always and only naturally occurring high fiber carbohydrates like yams, sweet potatoes. If you're going to have rice, try to make it as fibrous as possible in terms of brown rice, if possible. And think of it as your fuel, but think of it as your fuel and think of the fiber as a backup that's going to help you deal with any sugar cravings that you get later on. But if you're really active and you don't add complex carbohydrates that are high in fiber and you're taking out sugary foods that you were eating before, it's going to be too much for you. You have to balance it off. As one thing comes out, you have to add something in. That's the way it works. If you want to have a nice boost transition from eating sugary foods to not eating sugary foods. It sounds simple. And in practice, it can be if you stick with it, but sticking with it means sticking with it when you fail, which goes back to my first point and an important point. You will feel from time to time, but it's important to understand that just like someone who is dealing with a drug addiction, if you fail and keep on beating yourself up about your failure, what you're doing is you're reliving the experience of doing an activity and a behavior that you want to get out of your life. The way that you go forward is about forgetting about it. So the more you're beating yourself up is the more you're actually unconsciously retaining the experience and thus making yourself more likely to repeat the experience. If you constantly think about that piece of cake that, you know, you had that you messed up with, that piece of cake is going to come back into your life because you're constantly thinking about it. You need to forget, you need to let go and letting go means forgiving yourself when you mess up, get right back up and keep on going. And what's going to happen as well is that you're going to get to a point where it's not so much a matter of you're going to see all these desserts and use your willpower and say, I'm not going to have them anymore. But over time of not eating high sugar foods, that pleasure response gets blunted and you no longer have the same sensations, no longer have the same cravings that you did before. 
And our body will always go towards what's pleasurable. That's part of what causes the problems in the first place. And without sugary foods, you're going to feel the pleasure of being healthy. And it's going to feel good. And you're going to want more of it. And you're going to get to a point which I define as healthy eating, which is you're eating foods that are good for you, that are also the foods that you actually want. You're not doing it out of willpower. You get, you're getting to that place that very few are able to get to because most people don't believe they can, which you can, where what you want, what you should be eating is the same. Again, like I said in the beginning, there's nothing superhuman about me. It's just consistency and anything that I can do, you can do too. Thanks so much for tuning in and Excelsior.